Late in 2015, the challenge premiered its 27th season called Battle of the Bloodlines. This is a season where contestants from the challenge or other MTV reality TV properties would bring on family members to compete with on the season. Or so they thought. Cara Maria brought her cousin Jamie, a corrections officer, to compete alongside her. Having a big, brooding partner whom she can trust 100% would be a big asset to Cara. Something noticeably different about Cara Maria was her physique. A side by side of how she looked in Free Agents just a year prior to how she looked in Bloodlines, I mean she made the most of her time off from the show. No doubt, Kara and Cousin Jamie were a team to be feared when it came to strength. However, Kara Maria would have much more to overcome on the season than just the competition or challenges. But before we can get to any of that, out the gate Kara used strategy to stake a claim in the game. In the first daily challenge, Water Battle, teams would take part in trying to fill their team bucket with the most water before time ran out. There were two heats, men and women. Because of how the teams were structured, of either having two men, two women, or a man and a woman, the volume of water gathered for each team could drastically change between the heats. The women's heat was first and Christina with her stepsister Emily were in the lead heading into the men's heat. They were quickly passed by Bananas and his cousin Vince who were much quicker at filling their buckets. They went from zero to first in a blink of an eye. They were for sure going to get the win until Cara Maria came up with a plan. To stop Bananas from getting the win, Cara and Kellyanne got their partners along with a few others to abandon their solo endeavors to try and help Kahuta and Jill win. Now before we go any further, I want to address a rivalry that I felt I didn't have to bring up until now. And the rivalry is the one between Bananas and Cara Maria. It's tough trying to pinpoint exactly when this rivalry started as even multiple articles on the challenge subreddit have questioned the rivalry's origin. Nothing out of the ordinary stands out when watching the course of Cara's early seasons. One would think if Cara had such problems with Wes and even CT in her early goings, her and Bananas could have had an enemy of my enemy is my friend type of friendship. But watching back in Cutthroat, Rivals, and Battle of the Exes, the first three seasons Cara and Bananas were on together, there was little evidence of any heat or hate. If anything, there seemed to be respect and understanding between the two. In Rivals, we even see Bananas consoling Kara after an instance with the house ganging up on her. Listen, the position of me in, I, I really do feel free, but at the same time, it's just like a fun house we're living in right now, okay? Part of Abe's army. Okay? <laughs> a rumor of how this rivalry started comes actually from a Battle of the Exes after show episode. In a clip, Paula, Ty, Leroy, and Kara are having a conversation about Johnny and Camilla's relationship. Out of nowhere, Kara asked, Camilla has deep feelings for Johnny. Did he take her virginity? Whoa. Was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> Don't everybody she, the is, she, she is, she is on fire today. today. Which instantly changed the vibe. Rumor has it that Johnny had a girlfriend at the time this after show episode was released, which put pressure on said relationship. I like to keep my challenge life and my personal life separate. She did some things years ago that affected my personal life outside of the show. Never fully uh, forgave her for. Now it's hard to know for certain if this was the catalyst that spurred on the rivalry without any definitive say between the two parties, but the narrative could fit the timeline when both players went from cordial to enemies. Nothing much would be seen in Rivals 2 as Bananas had his hands full with CT and Wes paired up together. But Free Agents is when we saw some animosity start to spark up between Kara and Bananas. In the first daily challenge out on a ledge, Bananas would put Kara Maria in a chokehold to help slow down her team. You don't need to put a girl in a chokehold, Johnny. Then in the looper elimination between Kara Maria and Naya, Bananas was rooting for Naya to win. But he wasn't just rooting against Kara. Bananas also took time to heckle Cara Maria. She's dead, Naya. She's literally dead in the sand. She's totally gassed, Naya. She said in a confessional that Bananas took personal jabs at her, which helped fuel her to get the win. Cara Maria would take her own shot at Bananas in episode five with helping to vote him into elimination. However, Bananas would get the last laugh when he strong-armed Nani to vote for Cara when she really didn't want to. That led to Cara Maria's exit on the season, keeping the feud alive and well. Jump back to season 27 and the flames of the Cora Bananas rivalry were at their hottest and the heat could be felt in the first episode with Cara's plan to block Bananas from winning the first daily challenge. A power he would have certainly used to send Cara into the first elimination of the season.
Kara's plan worked out. Kahuta and Jill won. They sent Christina and Emily into the first elimination against Jenna and Brianna. Kara Maria was able to evade elimination for now. Episode 2 is when things got interesting. Kara and Cousin Jamie won the next daily challenge, Family Dinner. Kara Maria wanted to help Kahuta, giving him who he wanted in the elimination to give him the best odds of winning. It's important to note that Kara Maria at this time had struck up some flirtation relationship with Thomas. This new affection played a factor in their conversation with Kahuta and Jill. Kara and Cousin Jamie talked up Dario and Raffi as good options and it seemed as though Kahuta was on board. However, when Dario and Raffi didn't take the news of being sent into elimination well, Kara went to talk with Kahuta who said he would rather go against Thomas or Steven instead. Kara Maria was frustrated having to change the plans and make teams angry at her, but her and Cousin Jamie made the switch, quickly smoothing over everything in the house. Thomas said he understood and the twins were happy not to be sent in. The person who wasn't good by the end of this episode was Kahuta, who lost the elimination, sending him and his partner Jill home early. But little did everyone know that this is when the season would actually start. TJ asked Cara Maria and Cousin Jamie to join him on the pit floor. There was going to be a new twist to the season as all the pairs would be split into two teams, family against family. This would test if blood is really thicker than water. Cara Maria was up first and chose Johnny Bananas. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer, so uh, bananas. Not only was Cara getting a five-time champ on her team, but choosing Bananas meant Vince, Bananas' cousin, would be on Jamie's team. The rest of the contestants were picked, the game was shaken up, and no other changes were in sight. Moving on to the first daily challenge as two giant teams, everyone played Meet Me Halfway. A daily challenge having team members jump from platform to platform, transferring flags, while being high above the water. This challenge was difficult as players suffered injuries and had rough wipeouts. One victim of a vicious hit was Tony. He hit the edge of the platform and fell hard into the water. Tony was checked out by medics on site but came back to the challenge house. However, Tony's health seemed to worsen as the day went on. By the time players were making their way to the elimination, Tony had fainted. An ambulance was called to rush Tony to a nearby hospital. Later that night, production came to get Shane, Tony's brother, so he could be with Tony at the hospital. It wouldn't be until the next daily challenge, TJ announced that Tony and Shane were disqualified from the season, and with their premature exit, this forced producers to reach out for a replacement pair to take their place. The replacements were none other than Abram and his brother Mike. Normally bringing in a significant other on the show would be beneficial for one's game, as that's someone in your corner, an extra number on your side. But Abram showing up really threw a wrench into Kara's game. As mentioned earlier, Kara Maria was having a fling with Thomas. Thomas and Kara were caught snuggling up in the back of the bus on one beach outing by the banana cam. This was going to be really tough to explain to Abram, Kara's current boyfriend at the time, who was now in the game and on her team. Everything was relatively fine for a bit, but once Bananas was sort of on the ropes game-wise, this is when he and his cousin, Vince, needed to cause dissension on Kara's side of the house. Bananas was winning dailies with his red squad, but losing alliance members each week. The first elimination as teams, Bananas saw Camilla exit the game, and then in episode 6, Nani made her exit. Now Bananas is at fault for Nani's departure, as there was a rumor from the previous season that Bananas and Nani had hooked up in the Battle of the X's 2 Redemption House. Bananas was in a committed relationship at the time, and that rumor took a toll on said relationship, and it bled into this season. Bananas kept his distance from Nani so nothing could be misconstrued via the edit. He didn't stick up for Nani. She went in to face Kellyanne, who went on to win the Ring My Bell elimination. With his numbers dwindling and Kara's numbers thriving, desperate times call for desperate measures. Bananas and his cousin Vince decided to tell Abram about Kara and Thomas's relationship. Abram took this information with a grain of salt given the source, but he did go straight to Kara Maria to ask what was going on between her and Thomas before his arrival. Kara tried to downplay everything, chalking up her friendship with Thomas as hanging out and the occasional back rub. What would have been that line? Massages and egg sandwiches. Abram would try to reassure that he trusts Kara, but would also hold a house meeting on the bus to call out Stephen and Thomas, leading to Kara Maria and cousin Jamie getting involved as well as Bananas. She made no promises. You hear that, Kara Maria and Jamie? The twins have made no promises to you. What question, though? What did all this 
stirring stem from? Car I'm making promises. And find out six months find from now? What do? What? Find find out what? This big blow up came to a head with a Mike versus Steven elimination battle. Abram went psycho mode with his brother Mike feeding off of his energy. Yeah! Just rip it up! Mike won in the Homewrecker elimination, a fitting name looking back on it, but even Mike being crowned the victor and Abram getting to stay in the game, Car Maria was the one who was very upset as we can see in a surveillance footage of her talking to cousin Jamie about her relationship with Abram. Car Maria had hit her breaking point with Abram. By episode 9, the blue team lost again and they voted in Mike to the pit. The game had come to a point where it was either going to be Cousin Jamie or Vince to face off against Mike. Carr pushed hard for Vince, while Bananas went on the offense to push Jamie's name, stating that Carr was a huge threat left in the game, especially for all the women. The vote was a clean sweep for Jamie to go in against Mike. If that wasn't already going to be a tough elimination matchup, TJ pulled out two heavy hitters of CT and Zach to face off against the men. A coin flip decided that Mike would face Zach, while Jamie would go against CT in the handed over elimination. A sort of tug of war with pipes through walls. The players that can wrestle more pipes away from their heavy hitter or hold on the longest would win the elimination. There's a rumor that Abram and Mike came into the elimination ready to lay down for Kara and cousin Jamie, but the edit didn't show a hint of that and I couldn't find anything to support that claim. Now like we talked about with Kara on free agents, sometimes you need luck in your favor to help you get past a tough spot in the game. Some could see some luck with Jamie facing off against Mike as well as getting the coin flip to go against CT, one of Kara's good friends. Not saying that anyone took it easy on Kara or cousin Jamie, I'm just saying it could have been way tougher for them going into the pit this late in the game. Jamie won, Abram and his brother Mike were eliminated. We wouldn't see Abram until the Bloodlines reunion when we find out that Kara and him had officially broken up. Kara even apologizes for lying to him and downplaying what happened in the house. I didn't probably apologize, like, for not having your back, for lying to you in the house. Instead of mixed messages, I should have broken up with you before I went on the show. Having it have to come from Johnny's mouth instead of my own mouth is totally wrong, so I'm sorry. I think this is the right point to bring up the moment we saw between cousin Jamie and Kara that one night. The night she called her relationship with Abram unhealthy. After season 27, Kara would go on to do interviews, multiple interviews, describing her relationship with Abram as abusive. The shit that I went through in this relationship is not okay like there is not one thing that is okay and it happened leading up to you know before the whole thomas incident on bloodlines like a lot of shit that was not okay and then it got worse after he was able to hold that over my head and not only that but then you know comes the rebound guy and then you know he got physical with me and on the show now if you've seen abram on his road rule season you know he was disqualified for violence against other players. Abram on the challenge has shown a soft side, but at times would get loud and angry. On an after show, Kara, Abe, and Thomas were to appear on an episode together. A clip from that episode shows Abram getting loud in front of security. We learn from Abram that he was being dragged away by security after trying to talk to Tom in his dressing room to, quote, air out grievances. I will do this all day long! How are you, Abe? Something new every day. Rachel, Abram's former wife, posted on Instagram about her split with the former challenge contestant, citing that she was in an emotionally abusive relationship that sometimes got physical. With my <clears throat> former relationship, like his wife coming out, I was honestly like, yeah. hey, you know, maybe it was maybe it was me. Maybe we just were, were bad for each other. And it's like when she came out with glimpses of her story, I was like, that's it. Like, I'm not... You know, I've not only did I have therapists tell me I'm what happened to me was wrong and I was not the bad guy, but now I have her coming out validating my experiences. Unlike what we saw in season 22, this was the end of Abram and Cara Maria's relationship. This chapter had come to a close. After the handed over elimination, the game went back to pairs. Everyone was teamed back up with their original partners. In episode 10, Corey and Mitch won into power. Kara and Cousin Jamie got last place, sending them directly into the elimination. With Kara and Cousin Jamie set to go into the elimination, Mitch and Corey decided to make a power move by voting in Bananas and his cousin Vince into the elimination against them, barring one of the pairs from making the trip to Berlin and getting that much closer to the finals. This felt like a natural progression for these two to face off against each other. Everything on the season built up to this elimination matchup. 
In the Through Thick and Thin elimination, the pairs would have to bust through a brick wall and complete a puzzle. First pair to complete the puzzle wins. The elimination came down to Carl Maria and Johnny Bananas on the puzzle. Both had not been known as puzzle masters back then and neither would get better at puzzles throughout their careers. But it was Cara Maria who would take the win over her foe. And what we saw from Cara Maria was exuberance and joy. From Bananas, we saw good sportsmanship and respect. But Cara wasn't in the finals just yet. In episode 11, Corey set a challenge record winning his 8th daily challenge in a row getting a trip to the finals. Anissa and Rihanna were going directly into the final elimination. Corey and Mitch were put on the spot after their win. They had to name a team to send into the elimination, and their choice was Cara Maria and Cousin Jamie. Anissa had her frustrations building over the season. After things with Corey went cold, Anissa was annoyed with her cousin, and now having to go into an elimination so close to the finals was not very fun. Especially when Anissa had a knack for making it far on seasons, then being eliminated close or right before the finals. These frustrations spilled out on Akara when Anissa made fun of Kara's Boston accent. Can I know it, cousin? Can I know it? Ooh, when I get pissed off, cousin. Shut up, Anissa. Back the f off. Probably wasn't the best idea to pick a fight with someone you're going to be facing the next day in an elimination. Mine Not Yours was a pole wrestle variance that was very heated. Both women knew that this was it. It's either now or never. Their final dreams were on the line and there wasn't anything they wouldn't do to win whether it took a knee or an elbow. Cara Maria would win two rounds to nothing, winning their way into the finals while Anissa and Rihanna got a one-way ticket home. Cara Maria had done it. She made it to the finals in one of the strangest, toughest challenge seasons she's ever participated in. And what stood in her way was an arduous race against two very impressive young duos. The finals were grueling. It was a roller coaster of emotions between all stages. Surprisingly, Jenna and Brianna were in first place after the first leg. Cara and cousin Jamie would finish the first leg in second. But Cara's worst nightmare would come up next, and that was the eating portion. However, this was the golden opportunity to make up time as cousin Jamie was like a human garbage disposal. The other two teams got hit with time penalties. One could assume Cara and Jamie were close to being in first if they weren't already. After a night in an abandoned train station and a paddle down a river, the final stretch came down to a number puzzle and eight laps around a track. Cara Maria and cousin Jamie were either in first place or close behind in second place in every stage of the finals. They were consistently up at the top the whole time, which left no surprise when TJ announced they had won. Cara Maria and Jamie. I don't think words could describe the feeling Cara Maria had in that moment after the season she went through. Given the personal and game struggles, Kara overcame so much to be crowned a challenge champion. She broke a cycle of being in an unhealthy relationship. She took down her biggest rival. She overcame the doubts and criticisms of the past saying she wouldn't get to this moment. Well, here she was, finally a challenge champion. But this wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. Cara Maria would skip the next season, Rivals 3, but would be back for the 29th season, Invasion of the Champions. Cara Maria was part of the twist where about a third of the way through the season, eight challenge champions would enter the game to face off against mostly young and up and coming competitors. Cara Maria came into the game alongside Johnny Bananas, Darrell, CT, Laurel, Camilla, Zach, and Ashley K. Cara Maria was not only physically strong, but also socially strong. She had a good standing relationship with all her champion teammates, except for maybe Johnny Bananas. I wanted to point this out because as I mentioned, Laurel was on the season, her first return since her win on Free Agents. Last time we saw Kara and Laurel on the challenge, they weren't on the best of terms, but that was years ago and on 29, the edit seemed to show that they were on cordial terms. I mean, it would suck if anything or anyone would get in the way of them being friendly. Enter Nicole Z a rookie from the real world skeletons. Nicole has a bit of a reputation for being a player and in her debut season, she had an affection for strong women, AKA Cara Maria and Laurel. More specifically, Nicole expressed more interest in Cara Maria than Laurel. However, Cara didn't reciprocate those same feelings for Nicole. On the other hand, Laurel did have feelings for Nicole. 
Now on the reunion, Cora admits to flirting with Nicole, which could have given off the wrong impressions or at least mixed signals. Laurel was the second choice and felt like she was being played with. Let's stick a pin in this for now as we'll get to the reunion in a few. Season 29 is an interesting season in the sense that it was formatted for champions versus underdogs in the daily challenges, but when it came to elimination days, they'd flex between champion days to underdog days. In episode 7, it was champions elimination day. Bananas had somehow weaseled his way to getting a second run at the daily helping him win into power alongside Laurel. When it came to power on the season and in this episode, Laurel would get the sole vote to send in any man from the champion squad, excluding Bananas of course, directly into elimination, and vice versa. Bananas had the sole vote to send in any woman into elimination, excluding Laurel. Bananas would take the opportunity to vote in Cara Maria. Luckily, Cara faced off against Ashley Kate in a pole wrestle and won somewhat easily. The next Champions Day, the two best performing champions would be safe, while the other four would have to face off against each other. Now, unfortunately for Cara Maria, she would be going up against Laurel in the balls in elimination. He's basically just wrapping Cara Maria up in the ring. This led to Cara Maria's exit, and she was going to be sharing a plane ride home with bananas. Cara looked frustrated to leave. In the confessionals, Laurel worried she agitated Cara by being too rough with her in the elimination. But in Cara's confessionals, she said she wasn't upset losing to Laurel. She was just frustrated to leave in general. This is where we'll travel back to that pesky love triangle that Nicole, Cara, and Laurel found themselves in. With Cara gone, Nicole and Laurel hung out more in the house. This bonding time morphed into a full-fledged relationship outside the game. Now jumping to the reunion, The Miz asked the three about everything that transpired during the season and where does everyone sit with each other now that the dust had settled. Nicole and Laurel had been dating for over five months at the time. Cara expressed happiness for the couple, but also mentioned that Laurel had distanced herself. Laurel had blocked Cara's number on her own phone and Nicole's phone. I know, you blocked my number from Nicole's phone. She told me. Why did you block her number from Nicole's phone? Because I don't want her talking to Cara either. Cara felt hurt that Laurel put so much space between them. Something I felt that really bothered Laurel was Cara Maria sliding into Nicole's DMs. Cara mentioned that she only did it because Laurel wasn't communicating with her, so she was trying to get information on the couple. Who slipped into my, my DM first? Oh, I did. I, I, I slipped in because I was trying to like find out what was going on. Good so answer. Given the prior history of the love triangle and how smitten Nicole was for Cara during the season, I felt that this was a very big point of contention for Laurel. It also feels like Cara was contradicting herself at the reunion, stating she had no idea Laurel and Nicole liked each other in the challenge house, but then was messaging Nicole to check in on the couple because she knew they were a couple. And I didn't know. You say you didn't know, but like everyone knew that there was something going on. So how did you not I know? I already knew what was going on. This so I is definitely what I'm did. talking about. She could have heard this through the gossip from other players, but this brings up something Laurel said during an interview on Johnny Bananas' podcast. Laurel hated Cara portraying herself as vapid and the I don't know kind of girl. Laurel says that Cara Maria is not dumb. She is extremely smart. Playing this role of like vapid, like I don't know girl, but that's not who she is. She's actually really fucking smart. So I didn't like that either. You know, like what? You know, what? Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. just like, it was really frustrating to me. So for Cara to say she had no idea Laurel and Nicole liked each other in the house does seem preposterous. Especially taking into account Kara and Laurel having a conversation about Nicole in episode 9. I think this is a good time to talk about the total disintegration of Kara Maria and Laurel's friendship. During the invasion of the Champions reunion, Kara and Laurel seem to be in a worse place than ever before. I want to focus on three Laurel interviews, two from Reality Steve's podcast and one with Bananas on his podcast. During an interview with Bananas, Laurel made the claim that the friendship with Cara Maria was forced by production, giving the sense that this friendship was doomed from the beginning. It wasn't made to last. It was a television arc. Is there like some sort of like a, I don't know, falling out, a blow up you guys had? Well, you know, I think this is a, a whole, like the whole aspect of television production as well. Like the words best friend never came out of my mouth. That was a thing that they were trying to push as a storyline for a long time. Laurel said that Cara Maria was easily influenced by other people and production. 
Laurel felt that Cara Maria used their personal relationship as a storyline on Free Agents. But then I remember going on Free Agents and it was the first time that Cara finally was like, I'm gonna stand up for myself and I'm not gonna let her talk to me like that anymore. And I almost felt like that was like her season of like coming into her own. I didn't like the fact that she, instead of coming and talking to me personally, she decided to make a television show of our personal relationship. Yep. I don't appreciate that at all. And I would never do that to somebody that I called a friend. Laura would go on to say that communication is key. And with Cara Maria not voicing how she felt directly to her and listening to other people about how mean Laurel was made Laurel feel that Cara Maria was fake. You know who I am. Why are you buying into that? And so that bothered me a lot because if you know me on a personal level and you're going to tell me that I'm mean when I've been there to support you, when I've been there through some of your toughest times, that is skewed to me. That means she's caught up in the reality television. She does not have a good grasp on reality. And I can't get I can't get on with that. I'm like, why are you just so nasty? Like, what is your problem with me? Like, whenever I develop any sort of confidence or find any sort of my own, she tries to crap on me. Fast forward. What other season did we go together? We were not friends. Our friendship ended when I finally stomped the life out of it before we knew Nicole even existed. We go into invasion of the champions, not friends due to something that happened outside of the show due to the way that she was talking to me and treating to me and I was over it. In a 2018 reality Steve interview, Laurel mentioned that her last draw with Cara Maria came after invasion of the champions. But yeah, she's tried to contact me and after after Invasion, that was the last straw for me because I had told her, I'm interested in Nicole, can you back off a little bit? And she, she said, I'm not interested in Nicole at all, so yeah, I'll back off. But then when the camera came in the room, she was flirting with Nicole. I mentioned Cara DMing Nicole after the season, which made Laurel mad, but I think more context is needed. Laurel has said that this was her first ever relationship with a woman. I'm sure she felt feelings she hadn't felt in a long time or if at all. And Laurel was wanting to keep her new relationship as she had really strong feelings for Nicole. Laurel was very vulnerable on the podcast episode, opening up about a very traumatic time in her life she rarely told anyone. I would tell Nicole that I feel like my relationship with her healed some things in me that were very deeply wounded from a certain experience. I came back from studying abroad in Spain. So I think it had to have been when I was 20, like 21 or 22. And I went to a party at my friend's house. We were all drinking and I got too drunk. And so there was like a bedroom downstairs and I went downstairs and went to sleep. I woke up that night with a guy on top of me. That was my first experience mm. having sex. And I feel like it with me for the for a very long time because I immediately started bawling that night was when I shut down and um, I became inaccessible in a lot of ways and so my relationship with Nicole to kind of go back to what I was talking about in terms of healing Nicole was really great to me she was very like concerned about what I needed my comfort level and it had been a really long time since I had been in a relationship with somebody who had taken that amount of care. Laurel says that her relationship with Nicole was healing for her. She felt so much love with Nicole, who was there for her. So for Laurel, her relationship with Nicole was something very special. Ultimately, the relationship could not last. After nine months, Laurel broke up with Nicole, stating that distance and trust issues were just too much to overcome. In August of 2017, Nicole uploaded an Instagram post signifying the end of her and Laurel's relationship. Then in September 2017, Nicole departed to go film for the challenge Vendettas. During the season, Cara Maria and Nicole kiss. Given the significance of Nicole and Laurel's past relationship and how soon the kiss took place after their breakup, this was the torch that burned the bridge between the two champions. Laurel stated that Cara did email her an apology, but it was an apology laced with finger pointing about others and their hookup preferences in a way to almost justify Kara's actions despite knowing how Laura would feel about her in particular kissing Nicole. Because you're emailing me apologizing for making out with my ex-girlfriend on national television when that was a really huge point of contention for an, a long ass time. And that's the one thing that you could have not done. 
in respect to me and you did it. And now you're apologizing and you're saying, but Nani did this and you know, like Nani sleeps with people and Jenna hooks up with people and like, it's not a big, it's like, why are you talking about Nani and Jenna in your apology email to me when you should have just said, Laurel, I'm genuinely sorry this happened. Please, I hope you can forgive me. And it might've taken me time, but I have the, I have the ability to forgive people. And so that just made me angry. Immediately when I got off of this season of Vendettas, I sent her an email. Because, you know, you saw the previews of me kissing Nicole out of a bar. And I, out of respect to our past, I reached out to her, even though we hadn't even talked coming since invasion. I messaged her and I was like, look, out of respect to what we had in the past, like, I'm sorry. Like, there was no intent to hurt you. Like, this was just, you know, a drunken lapse in judgment. I, there's no feelings on either end of me or Nicole. It was a mistake. And instead of coming at me and saying, you know, that's cool. Like, I appreciate the olive branch. I still hate you, but whatever. She came at me and was like, anytime you talk to me, you make me miserable. Like, you know, you drive me crazy. I fucking hate you. Like, it was just an awful, awful, awful email back. And from the interviews, Laurel makes it sound like she'll never be able to bury the hatchet with Cara Maria. I mean, you just said you wish her well. So, I mean, that, I mean, it sounds like, you know, maybe someday in the future, you guys might, might be cool. No, I don't think no? so. All right. I, I, I think... No, I just, I, I just wish her well. It's sad because at one point, Laurel had moved out to Montana for a stretch of time to be with Cara through her breakup with Abram. A friend to uproot themselves and move across the country to help during a rough patch is huge. I think only a true friend would do that for another true friend. Yet in under two years, where there was once care and love, now stood pain and anger. But you guys lived together. But at some point, you guys did like each other, right? We did. Like, the, the thing is, is she, when she was kind and good, she had her moments of being above and beyond what you can ask a friend to be. But there shouldn't be the lows that equal the highs. You know what I mean? Like, none of my friends treat me the way that she's treated me. Kara and Laurel's relationship is a complex story by itself. We've seen a lot of it on the show, but no doubt there's more information outside the game that we as the audience aren't privy to. But this won't be the last time we see Cara and Laurel on a season together. Now, before we go on to the next main season, I want to talk about a spinoff called Champs vs. Pros. A small The Challenge spinoff where challenge champions faced off against professional athletes to win money for charity. I don't think it's necessary to spend too much time talking about this spinoff, but I want to highlight it because Cara Maria found herself in the finals paired up with Darrell, harkening back to her first challenge season when the pair exited early. Years later, here they are running in the finals together, taking home first place. Redemption, baby! Yeah. Good job! <laughs> Winning against an ex-NFL linebacker, a snowboarder, and two challenge champions. I want to take time to say it's moments like this that make the challenge special. With other reality shows, new faces and new storylines are made to take center stage each season. But the challenge allows us to see players play in multiple formats with varied casts that only in the challenge could we see two players who were paired up seven years prior get a do-over to get redemption. Kara's win in the spinoff would be a great lead into her next challenge season. In 2017, the challenge entered its 30th season. And with it, MTV wanted to make this season bigger and more challenging than ever. The cast was made up of 30 contestants, whom TJ described as the shadiest, most conniving, cunning, and downright dirtiest players the challenge has ever had. Along with a jam-packed cast, TJ had multiple twists, such as everyone was playing for a share of $1 million and that there was going to be a redemption house. Cara Maria came in stronger than ever, both physically and socially. For the most part, Cara Maria did get some heat mainly from Kayla and Jordan. Let's first talk about Kayla as the Jordan rivalry will be relevant later on in the season. Cara Maria, as we saw, got picked on early in her challenge career being a target because no one liked her. But she was a strong competitor now, a champion, a real threat. And when you are on top, people want to knock you down a peg. In comes Kayla. Kayla made her challenge debut on the season prior, Invasion of the Champions. They briefly met before Kayla was eliminated by Sylvia that season, but in her sophomore year, Kayla wanted to make her mark, and she set her eyes on Cara Maria. 
This was sort of the motif this season. You had Corey and the Young Bucks wanting to take out the veteran men of Bananas, CT, Derek, and Jordan as they saw it was their time to take over the challenge, while Kayla wanted to target Cara Maria and Camilla. Cara Maria excelled from the start of Dirty 30. She helped convince the already frantic Ashley to quit, taking out the reigning champ before the game even really began. Since Ashley is definitely one of the strongest players here, I'm just thinking the house is too full anyways, so bye. When it came to the daily challenges, Cara Maria started the season with a five daily challenge win streak. She won in Battle Royale, allowing her to vote in Kayla into elimination. Then Cara Maria won alongside her Bostonian friend CT in the Pirate's Treasure Daily, where she was able to get another one of her harshest critics on the season, Jordan, voted into elimination. Cara Maria really had nothing to worry about for like the first two thirds of the season. Cara was winning and staying out of the double cross pools. The worst thing to happen to her early on was a drunk Tony telling Cara Maria she looked like his 60 year old mom. You look like my mom. You look like my mom. <laughs> One moment I do feel like I should bring up is what happens in episode 9. Cara Maria's best friend on Dirty 30 was Camilla. This was very interesting to see, knowing their history with each other back on Battle of the Seasons, when it looked as if they hated each other. But in Invasion of the Champions, the two seemed to get along, probably in thanks to a shared dislike of Amanda and the Lavender Ladies. They were seen doing pranks on the rookie women and just hanging out here and there. So when we see the two on Dirty 30, they were full-blown best friends. In episode 9, when coming into the house, Camilla overheard Leroy making comments from his room. Not knowing the context, Camilla confronts him, being aggressive against Leroy, bringing up his skin color. Black mother It's all about black mother Then when we see Camilla go downstairs, she grabs weights to possibly use them as projectiles or weapons. After dropping the weights, Cara Maria tried to console Camilla. We hear a confessional from Cara Maria then calling Camilla her number one alliance member and her best friend in the house. This is my number one alliance. This is my number one friend in the house. And like you can't break through to someone when they're in that state. This really didn't have too much weight on Cara's game, but it showed who she was aligned with. And if there was any risk to Cara's game, it was Camilla being a liability. But Camilla came back into the game, faced no repercussions, and Cara got to keep her number one alliance member still in the game. Now I owe nothing to anybody except for Camilla. It's Cara Maria's birthday and my wish for her is to stop aligning herself with Camilla because Camilla sucks and everyone hates her. Cara Maria's game would hit a huge speed bump in the Blackout Daily Challenge, which was a purge challenge. The team who won would get to send in one man and one woman from either of the losing teams straight to the Redemption House. Unlucky for Cara, the green team made up of Kayla, Jordan, Tony, Veronica, and Brittany won. Kara and CT were going directly into the Redemption House, one Redemption loss away from exiting the season. In the next few episodes, the Redemption House would get crammed with competitors. Kara and CT joined Anissa and Dario, who had been in the Redemption House prior to episode 13. And in the preceding episodes, Leroy, Jemmy, Jordan, Veronica, Brittany, and Bananas would join the party as well. This is where the big fight between Kara, Maria, and Jordan happened. In episode 14, Jordan and Veronica were sent directly to the Redemption House after a purge challenge, which can be seen by some as karma. Everything gets kicked off when Kara asks Veronica who suggested to send Kara to Redemption. Was it Kayla or Jordan? Him. Now the Jordan and Kara rivalry felt to come out of nowhere. Before Dirty 30, Kara and Jordan had been on two seasons together. Rewatching those seasons, one can see any animosity spark up between the two. Jordan Main claims that no one wanted to run the finals with Cara Maria. He was very blunt, asserting Cara crumbles under pressure situations, which wasn't completely untrue. In Rivals 2, Jordan saw Cara Maria freak out in the Swingers Daily Challenge, and this was a point of criticism Cara's own cousin had said back during the Season 27 finals. Cara's weakness is sometimes she gives up on herself and she gets... I do not... Jordan would go on to name other men in the game who would not want to be paired up with Cara in the finals and further states that other women like Tori, Jenna, and Kayla, one of Kara's biggest adversaries on the season, would be much better partners in a finals. That they can run, swim, and are easier to work with. Kara Maria was offended. Feeling disrespected, she sets Jordan's bag on a sailing voyage in the Redemption House pool. Little did they know that there was no getting away from each other. 
both Jordan and Kara would win themselves back into the main game. Then they would win a boat ride together after finishing in the top two in the X Marks the Spots daily challenge, a challenge that rewarded them tickets to the finals. Kara Maria was back in the finals, but she would have her work cut out for her. This was a stacked finals made up of CT, Jordan, Derek, Camilla, Kara, and Tori, the rookie of the season. The Dirty 30 finals would be ran in stages, with most of it being done in pairs. But there was a choice to every stage where whoever got done quicker would get to choose which player they'd get to be partnered up with. And unlike other challenges, you could duplicate pairings. Thanks to giving players the options to repeat pairs, Cara Maria and Jordan never had to work with each other during the finals at all. This was a tough finals. Cara Maria didn't have her best showing. She consistently did well, but her effort just wasn't good enough. She'd be paired with Derek Kay for the majority of the finals and once with CT. She would securely lock in a second place finish and a check for $35,000. Even though she didn't win, this season marked a first for Cara Maria. Dirty 30 was the first challenge season that Cara didn't see an elimination. Yes, it helped she was in the Redemption House for a time, and yes, she did take part in a Redemption game, but when looking strictly at eliminations, Cara Maria was clean, and this was a trend that she was hoping to continue into the next season. Can I say, I think when it comes to Cara's career, I'd consider Vendetta's to be the smoothest season she has ever played. There was very little Cara Maria had to overcome in this season. Early on, Cara and Marie both found the rookie from the UK, Kyle, very cute. And even though he kissed Marie first, he found his way into Cara's heart and bed. Kyle and Cara were a dynamic duo for the whole season, and to be honest, they both seemed very happy. On the Challenge Mania podcast, Cara opened up about her dating history. She described her experiences as a struggle. I don't have a dating life. I don't even have like a hookup life. I, that's why I was so excited when I went on the show and like there was a guy that I, I found attractive. I was like, yes, a unicorn. She also said that she had a very specific type that if she does find someone she likes, it's like finding a unicorn. And in Vendetta's, Kyle was that unicorn. Kara had some great new friendships in the game with Kyle and Natalie, both of whom helped her tremendously. Natalie cozied up to Bananas, and Kyle had a great social game. He got friendly with a ton of the house, including Bananas, Zach, Tony, and many more. With her vet status and now new bonds that helped connect her to other parts of the house, Kara was covered on all sides. Everything was working in Kara's favor this season. Marie exited the game midway through when she couldn't break out of a basket. Bananas was public enemy number one when a rumor of him kissing Kaylee shook up the whole house. The rookie Cam was the scapegoat of the season as she saw a ton of eliminations in Vendettas. Despite Kara being nominated three times by the Troika, she didn't see a single elimination on her way to another finals appearance. Cara Maria in the finals had an easier time than the previous season's finals. First of all, the level of competition wasn't as tough. Going from five champs and a rookie to two champs, two finalists, two rookies, Tony and Kayla, the main difference of this final compared to the others was that only one person would be crowned champion, the first ever solo winner in the show's history. The first section of the finals had multiple stages and the slowest two men and women would be purged before the second portion. Cara Maria and Kayla really lucked out as Nicole Z was medically disqualified early and Cam was the only person unfortunate enough to lose decked out a game of higher or lower against mercenaries. Everyone but Cam was able to win their rounds. Cam was tasked by Melissa to bury a log, which took her challenge winning dreams to the grave. The final section of the Vendetta's finals was a free for all task called Memory Smash. Players had to memorize a board of colors, then run to another board to recreate it. The first player to correctly recreate their color board and then hoist the challenge flag would win. Honestly, Cara Maria couldn't ask for a better trio to face off against. Not trying to throw shade on Kayla, Zach, or Kyle, but none had the experience that Cara Maria had at that time. Zach won his rookie season and had done well in other seasons following then, but he didn't have as much skill, especially when it came to memory tasks. This was Kyle and Kayla's first finals experiences. Both played well on the season, but neither seemed really in contention to win. Cara Maria was able to take care of business, put her board together, 
and win. <laughs> Cara Maria, now a two-time champ, made history being the first solo winner of the challenge. The title was hers and hers alone at that moment, along with a check for over $378,000. Cara Maria had hit the peak. She was queen of the challenge. At one point, Cara Maria was the first eliminated, unsure if she'd ever get another chance on the show. Now a six-time finalist, two-time champ, and face of the challenge. Nothing could stop her. You may or may not know me as uh, the little bad boy villain from uh, Big Brother 18. If you like me, thank you. If you don't, then you could just go yourself. Big, big.